9.6 is the distance from a point to a plane. And this is the very last lesson in your vectors course. So I'll talk really slowly. <laughs> no, I won't. So let's talk about um, the formula development. So as you can see, I'm not writing out a lot of a lot of stuff here. And that's because the whole derivation of this formula is quite complex. Um, and I thought your teacher probably wouldn't do it with you, or maybe they would. But if you would really like to know how to do it, it's on page 542 and 543 of your textbook. Um, generally, by the time I get to this point in the course, the students are really tired and I say, okay, let's just look at the formula. It's really easy to use and um, just go from there. So again, if you want to see how to how they rearrange the formulas and substituted things to get this equation, it's on page 542, 543 of your textbook. So let's look at this. So it says the distance from a point, blah, 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 to the plane. Notice the nice format here equals zero. Make sure everything's on one side of the equation or else you'll have the wrong value for your D. In three space is the absolute value of these divided by the magnitude of the direction vector, where d is the distance between a point and the plane. So note, if we're at the origin, when x, y, and z are zero, you can see that as soon as I get rid of all these things, these things, boy, I'm really technical today, I would have d over the magnitude of the direction vector. Okay, so let's take a look at this one here. It says, find the distance q, 1, 3, minus 2, to this plane for x minus y minus z plus 6 equals 0. And again, remember that you make sure that your d is on this side of the equation or you will have the wrong sign. So I would highly recommend you write out your little, um, what each of the variables are here. What your, not your variables, but your numbers. And that way it's a really easy direct substitution for you once you have those all written down. So I'm going to write them out because that's the way I do things. And I'm going to write out the equation here. And it's probably a good idea for you to do that again because remember the more you write things out, the whole learning process to see it, say it, write it, you will remember it. Okay, so I have that over the magnitude of the normal vector. Okay, so now all I have to do is substitute in. So I have a, so that's four times one, plus b is minus one times y is three, plus c, which is minus one times z, which is minus two, z sub zero, so this one, Getting a little confused here. And I'm dividing by the magnitude of the direction vector. So I'm just going to plug ABC in here. So I have 4 squared plus minus 1 squared plus minus 1 squared. And let's get all those numbers straight here. So I have 4 minus 3, that's 1, plus 2 is 3, plus 6 is 9. So the absolute value of 9 is still 9. And in the denominator, I would have 16, 17, 18. So the square root of 18, um, you might want to write that out a little more pretty. And it's going to simplify for you, right? So I have 9. And the square root of 18, that's going to be 9 square root 2. Um, sorry, 9 times 2. So the square root of 9 is 3. So that gives me 3 root 2. And the 3 goes into the 9 three times. See how pretty that turned out? 3 over the root of 2. And there you go. That's distance between these two from the, this point to this plane. Okay, so the last one I'm going to do is to find the distance between two planes. So I have my planes written out here. And the first thing I want to do is check the normals. So the normal for this uh, plane is going to be 2, 2, minus 1. And the second normal here is going to be 4, 4, minus 2. Now, you can think that if, if you have to find the distance between two planes and they're not parallel, then it 
some point they should intersect, right? So between two planes, generally they have to be parallel. So, and they are, obviously this is two times, this is two times this one. So they're parallel and distinct because these numbers here would be different. If I multiplied this by two, this would be minus six and plus nine. So they're parallel and distinct planes and parallel and distinct. So in order for me to find the distance between those two planes, I'm going to need to have to find a point on one of the planes. So let's find a point just like we did with um, distance between two parallel lines. In the last lesson, we need to find a point, find a point on pi one. And the easiest way to do that looks like, oh, um, that's okay too. We might need a little meditation going on here. So a point on pi one, the easiest one to do would be to say, well, let's say x is zero, y is zero, and that would be z is going to be three, right? Easiest, easiest to choose um, x equals zero, y equals zero, then z is going to be equal to three. So zero, zero, minus three, that's not minus three, it'd be positive three. I wonder why I said three before. If this is zero, this is zero. Unless I wrote down the equation wrong, it should be minus three. Positive three, I mean. Zero, zero, and three. Okay, just that I had done this before and I, I used the wrong number. I said it was three, which was wrong. Okay, so this is going to be plus three because of this equation. Minus said minus three equals zero z is equal to 3, z is equal to minus 3. Oh my goodness, Miss Havrot. I'm just so excited about doing your last lesson. It is minus 3. I just saw the two negatives and then for some reason thought it should be positive, but obviously it's not. Okay, so that means d is going to be equal to the magnitude. So it's ax0, by0, cz0, plus d. So I do a uh, so 4 times 0. Now make sure, again, that you're plugging it in, your point into the second equation, right? You're not going to want to plug that into, um, I didn't write it out here, 0, 0, minus 3. So that's my x0, y0, z0, and my abc is going to be this one, because I use this equation. If you don't, you're just going to get 0, and you're going to go, oh, how could that be zero? If it's zero, it means it's on the line. Right? Uh, sorry, on the same plane. So minus two, minus three, plus nine. The absolute value of that over the square root of four squared plus four squared plus two squared or plus minus two squared if you want to be really technical about it. And we will be really technical. So that's zero, zero. Six plus nine is 15. And in the denominator, we have 16, and 16 is 30. 2 plus 4 is 36. Square root of 36 is 6. And 15 over 6, of course, would reduce to 5 over 2. Therefore, the planes... Oh, I'm so sad to write this last line because it's the end of the lesson. Therefore, the planes are 5 halves, or 2.5 units apart. Or maybe I should write the end, just like in the movies, right? Uh, the end. Does that make you sad or happy? Some of you are going on to calculus, and some of you, this will be, you know, like happening in June, and you're going to say, hooray, I'm finally finished with this course. So I hope you're all well and doing well, and that this has helped you some way. If yes, give me a thumbs up. Give me a little comment. If you have any questions, don't be shy. I'm here for you. Bye for now.